Violence Against Women and Children Act of 2004. Violence Against Women and Children refers to any act or a series of acts committed by any person against a woman who is his wife, former wife, or against a woman with whom the person has or had a sexual or dating relationship, or with whom he has a common child, or against her child, whether legitimate or illegitimate, within or without the family abode, which result in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, psychological harm or suffering, or economic abuse, including threats of such acts, battery, assault, coercion, harassment, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty. Types of violence. We have physical violence, which refers to physical injuries or mutilation. Psychological violence, such as acts or omissions causing or likely to cause mental or emotional suffering, including stalking, damage or property, ridicule, repeated verbal abuse, depriving the woman of access to her family, and marital infidelity. Sexual violence, forcing the woman to watch obscene movies, forcing the woman to engage in any sexual act. Economic abuse refers to acts that make or attempt to make a woman financially dependent, including withdrawal of financial support, preventing her from engaging in a legitimate profession, business or activity, deprivation or threat of deprivation of financial resources, and the right to use conjugal or community property. So who are protected under the law? Women and children of the abused women. And who are liable? The husband or ex-husband, the boyfriend or ex, father of a woman's child, lesbian girlfriends or partners or ex-partners, and any person with whom the woman has or had a sexual or dating relationship. So this is not limited only to husband and wife. This is uh, this law is applicable to persons with sexual or dating relationship, even if the relationship has already been ended or in a short moment only, for as long as uh, the parties has or had a sexual or dating relationship, then uh, they are they can be subject to this particular law, and the person who committed violence will be liable under Violence Against Women and Children Law. Now, what is dating relationship? Dating relationship refers to a situation wherein the parties live as husband and wife without the benefit of marriage or are romantically involved over time and on a continuing basis during the course of the relationship. A casual acquaintance or ordinary socialization between two individuals in a business or social context is not a dating relationship. What are the punishable acts under Bausi law? Number one, causing physical harm to the woman or her child. Threatening to cause the woman or her child physical harm. So even if you have not yet uh, harmed them physically, for as long as there is a threat of physical harm, then that can be punishable under Bausi law. Attempting to cause the woman or her child physical harm. Placing the woman or her child in fear of imminent physical harm. Attempting to compel or compelling the woman or her child to engage in conduct which the woman or her child has a right to desist from or desist from conduct which the woman or her child has a right to engage in. Or attempting to restrict or restricting the woman's or her child's freedom of movement or conduct by force or threat of force, physical or other harm or threat of physical or other harm or intimidation directed against the woman or child. This shall include, but not limited to, the following acts committed with the purpose or effect of controlling or restricting the woman's or her child's movement or conduct. So I think an example of this is that, uh, like in married couple, the husband will prohibit his wife to employ herself or to, to be gainfully employed. So you are controlling or the husband is controlling or restricting the woman, woman's movement or conduct. So that can be punishable under Vowsi law. Threatening to deprive or actually depriving the woman of her child 
of custody to her or his family. Depriving or threatening to deprive the woman or her child of financial support, legally due her or her family, or deliberately providing the woman's children insufficient financial support. So, like, for example, food. So, you will not provide for a food to your children, then uh, you can be punishable under Gaussi law. And you will not support your children and your wife, then you can be liable under Gaussi law. Depriving or threatening to to deprive the woman or child of a legal right and preventing the woman engaging in any legitimate profession, occupation, business, or activity, or controlling the victim's own money or properties, or solely controlling the conjugal or common mom money or properties. This is what I'm telling you, that uh, there are husbands that uh, prohibit their wives to earn a living or to be gainfully employed. They will require their wives to stay at home and... Uh, look for their children. So that constitutes a punishable act or an act punishable under the Valsi law. Inflicting or threatening to inflict physical harm on oneself for the purpose of controlling her actions or decision. So the husband here is not uh, physically harming his wife or his children, but he is physically harming himself in order to control the decision of his wife or children, causing or attempting to cause the woman or child to engage in any sexual activity which is not constitute rape by force or threat of force, physical harm, or through intimidation directed against the woman or her child or her or his immediate family. Engaging in purposeful, knowing, or reckless conduct personally or through another that alarms or causes substantial emotional or psychological distress to the woman or child. This shall include but not limited to the following acts, stalking or following the woman or child in public or private places, peering in the window or lingering outside the residence of the woman or her child, entering or remaining the dwelling or on the property of the woman or her child against her or his will, destroying the property in personal belongings or inflicting harm to animals or pets of the woman or her child, and engaging in any form of harassment or violence. Causing mental or emotional anguish, public ridicule or humiliation to the woman or her child, including but not limited to repeated verbal and emotional abuse and denial of financial support or custody of minor children of access to the woman's child or children. So the prescriptive period for the filing of Vausi cases is 10 years or 20 years. So those which has that has uh, asterisk is uh, will prescribe in 10 years like this one public ridicule humiliation um, engaging in purposeful knowing or reckless conduct because this is an asterisk so this will prescribe in 10 years We also have here uh, letter G, causing or attempting to cause the woman or her child to engage in any sexual activity. This will also prescribe in 10 years. And all others will prescribe in 20 years. So what are the penalties for violations of Bausi law? So letter A, acts falling under section 5A, constituting attempted, frustrated, or consummated parricide or murder or homicide shall be punished in accordance with the provisions of the revised penal code. So if it will become these offenses, then uh, it, it will be punished under the revised penal code. If these acts resulted in mutilation, it shall be punished in accordance with the revised penal code. Those constituting Serious physical injury shall have the penalty of passion mayor, that is six years to 12 years. Those constituting less serious physical injury shall be punished by passion correctional, that is six months and one day to six years. And those constituting slight physical injury shall be punished by arresto mayor. And acts falling under section 5B shall be punished by imprisonment of two degrees lower than the prescribed penalty for a consummated crime as specified in the preceding paragraph, but shall in no case be lower than arrest of mayor. Now, the penalties actually depends upon the acts committed. So 
we'll have to refer yourselves to the particular sections that are mentioned here. Like, for example, letter B, acts falling under section 5C and 5D shall be punished by arresto mayor. Acts falling under section 5E shall be punished by prison correctional. Acts falling under section 5F shall be punished by arresto mayor. Acts falling under section 5G shall be punished by prison mayor. And acts falling under 5H and 5I shall be punished by prison mayor. Okay? If the acts are committed while the woman or child is pregnant or committed in the presence of a child, the penalty to be applied shall be the maximum period of penalty prescribed in the section. In addition to imprisonment, the perpetrator shall pay a fine in amount of not less than 100,000, but not more than 300,000, and undergo mandatory psychological counseling or psychiatric treatment and shall report compliance to the court. So where do you file a case for VAUSI? So you can file the criminal action in the family court, or if none, in the regional trial court where the crime or any of its elements was committed at the option of the complainant. So say, for example, uh, the, the violence was committed in Tagum City, so you will file the case in the regional trial court or in the family court of Tagum City. Or if there is no family court in Tagum City, then in any regional trial court where the, uh, of Tagum City because the crime was committed in Tagum City. Protection order. So you can actually apply for protection order from the family court in the residence of petitioner, if none, in the RTC, MTC, MCTC, as the case may be. So speaking of protection orders, uh, this, uh, this is uh, intended to prevent further acts of violence against a woman or her child. To safeguard the victim from further harm, minimizing disruption in the victim's daily life, and give her the opportunity and ability to regain control over her life. So there are three kinds of protection orders. We have barangay protection order, temporary protection order, and permanent protection order. Reliefs of protection orders. Prohibition of the respondent from threatening to commit or committing personally or through another any of the acts mentioned in Section 5 of this Act. Prohibition of the respondent from harassing, annoying, telephoning, contacting, or otherwise communicating with a petitioner directly or indirectly. Removal and exclusion of the petition of the respondent from the residence of the petitioner, regardless of ownership of the residence, either temporarily for the purpose of protecting the petitioner or permanently where no property rights are violated. And if respondent must remove personal effects from the residence, the court shall direct a law enforcement agent to accompany the respondent, gather these things and escort respondent from the residence. Directing the respondent to stay away from petitioner and designated family or household member at the distance specified by the court and to stay away from the residence, school, place of employment, or any specified place frequented by the petitioner and any designated family or household member. So in short, the protection orders will uh, prohibit the respondent from uh, going uh, to the place where the petitioner or where the victims are located or uh, you are the respondent is not allowed to stay near to the uh, victim or to the to his wife, his partner, or his child. Directing lawful possession and use by petitioner of an automobile and other essential personal effects, regardless of ownership, and directing the appropriate law enforcement officer to accompany the petitioner to the residence of the parties to ensure that the petitioner is safely restored to the possession of the automobile and other essential personal effects or to supervise the petitioner's or respondent's removal of personal belongings, granting a temporary permanent custody of a child or children to the petitioner, directing the respondent to provide support to the woman and or her child if entitled to legal support, prohibition of the respondent from any use or possession of any firearm, Dead or deadly weapon and order him to surrender the same to the court for appropriate disposition by the court, including revocation of license and disqualification to apply for any license to use or possess a firearm. If the offender is a law enforcement agent, the court shall order the offender to surrender his firearm, shall direct the appropriate authority to investigate on the offender and take appropriate action in the matter. Restitution for actual damages caused by the violence inflicted, including but not limited to property damage, 
medical expenses, child care expenses, and loss of income, directing the DSWD or any appropriate agency to provide petitioner may need, and provision of such other forms of relief as the court deems necessary to protect and provide for the safety of the petitioner and designated family or household member, provided petitioner and any designated family or household member consents to such relief. Any of the reliefs provided under this section shall be granted even in the absence of a decree of legal separation or annulment or declaration of absolute nullity of marriage. The issuance of a BPO or dependency of an application for BPO shall not preclude a petitioner from applying for or the court from granting a TPO or a PPO. So basically, the protection orders are intended to protect the wife and the children from further uh, violence that may be committed by the offender or the, the husband or the previous partner. So who may avail or apply for protection orders? So it can be applied by the offended party herself, parents or guardians of the offended party, ascendants, descendants, or collateral relatives within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity, officers or social workers of the DSWD or social workers of local government units, police officers, preferably those in charge of women and children's desks, punong barangay or barangay kagawad, lawyer, counselor, therapist, or healthcare provider, or at least two concerned responsible citizens of the city or municipality where the violence against women and children occurred and who has personal knowledge of the offense committed. So we need to say uh, the person who can apply for protection order is not limited to the offended parties themselves, but uh, any public or any concerned individual can actually apply for protection orders. Enforceability of protection orders, all TPOs and PPOs issued under this act shall be enforceable anywhere in the Philippines and a violation thereof shall be punishable with a fine ranging from 5,000 to 50,000 pesos and or imprisonment of six months. Legal separation cases. In cases of legal separation where violence specified in this act is alleged, Article 58 of the Family Code shall not apply. The court shall proceed in the main case and other incidents of the case as soon as possible. The hearing on any application for protection or refile by the petitioner must be conducted within the mandatory period specified in this act. Public crime. Violence against women and their children shall be considered a public offense, which may be prosecuted upon the filing of a complaint by any citizen having personal knowledge of the circumstances involving the commission of the crime. So if, for example, you witness a violence against any woman and their children, then you can actually file a complaint because the law says that any citizen having personal knowledge of the circumstances involving the commission of the crime can actually file for Bausi because Bausi is a public offense. Battered woman syndrome. Victim survivors who are found by the courts to be suffering from battered woman syndrome do not incur any criminal and civil liability notwithstanding the absence of any the elements for justifying circumstances of self-defense under the revised penal code. In the determination of the state of mind of the woman who was suffering from battered woman syndrome at the time of the commission of the crime, the court shall be assisted by expert psychiatrists or psychologists. So what does this battered woman syndrome mean? This means that, say for example, a woman has been battered or has been uh, experiencing violence from her husband. Uh, there must be uh, three cycles of battered woman syndrome before the woman can claim this uh, battered woman syndrome as a defense in case the woman uh, killed or has uh, committed any crime against her husband. So this is actually a defense uh, available for a battered woman. And uh, there are requirements or requisites for this before this can be availed of by a woman. Because uh, in case the woman uh, kills her husband or her partner because of violence, then the woman can avail of the battered woman syndrome as a defense so that she cannot be criminally or civilly liable. But take note that there are requisites before a woman can uh, use this defense, no, battered woman syndrome, in a criminal case. 
rights of the victim in addition to their rights under existing laws, victims of violence against women and their children shall have the following rights. To be treated with respect and dignity, to avail of legal assistance from the POW or the Department of Justice or any public legal assistance office, to be entitled to support services from the DSWD and LGUs, to be entitled to all legal remedies and support as provided for under the Family Code, and to be informed of their rights and the services available to them, including their right to apply for a protection order. Other rights, right to damages, means, which means that you can uh, file a case to recover money because of the violence committed against you, right to be exempted from docket fees and other expenses. This means that you are not liable to pay for filing fees in case you will file a vowsy case, right to avail a paid leave of absence up to 10 days so you, you can uh, leave from your work for 10 days, and right to confidentiality. So all vowsy cases are confidential. So that's it for Violence Against Women and Children Act. And thank you for listening.